trumpets. Well, uh, hello to you. Guess what? I mean, the end of the world. Hello! The end of the world. We are at the Negev together mm -hmm. with, you already know, sir, Eti, 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 Eti. Uh, the reason, can I, can I uh, tell them why we actually visiting of the end of the world? Share it with the whole world. <laughs> Next to the end of the world, there is um, a soldier that slipping now is in, uh, in his tent. And that soldier is our son, uh, Omri, and he's 19, 20 years old. 20. 20 years old and um, that's a mother of a soldier you can understand how scary it is because she knows that he is going to Gaza soon he's entering to Gaza yeah then then that's why we are here and we are at Tel Arad which is a beautiful actually two cities the first city is the bronze city let's say yeah uh, we are talking about 3,200 BC, no, 3,000, yeah, 3,000 BC, yeah. million, million years right. ago, yeah. and that's where the Canaanite actually lived, uh, lived, and on top of the hill, you can see a tell, tell its layers of cities, and um, this is an important tell because it's actually part of the, part of Judea. Part of Judea? Located on the Patriarch, Patriarch Road. Yes, and that's yes. actually the desert between the Greenland and and um, uh, No Man Land, yeah, wandering Bedouins. Yes, the Nabatis, and uh, there is something special on top of it. Are we going to tell them? The, are we going to tell, tell them? them the tell. tell them about nah, it. Yeah, no, we're going to tell you about it later on. But first, let's go to visit. The ancient tell of Arad. Then let's go back, let's say, to 3000 BC. Aha! The only people that I see here. Ah, great! Okay. It's. Hallelujah! That couple is from the city of Haifa, which is north of Tel Aviv, and they are on the way to um, to the kind of a weekend or a few days uh, vacation at the Dead Sea, which is not so far away from here. We are at the northern part of the desert. Uh, but it was an amazing rainy season and look how beautiful it looks like it's so green here it's so green here we just ate excellent lunch that she gave us uh, we are on the way to the city Eti we found two people in that national park and this is beautiful because you know it's wartime between uh, Gaza, Hamas um, uh, terrorist and Israel. There are no tourists. No tourists at all. We are tourists. We are, we are tourists, yeah, yeah. We are not working. And that's why we became tourists. And we will. It's freezing here, I must say. It's quite cold. Uh, then let me show you a few places here. And then we're gonna climb up to the tell to um, to talk about something special that we found there. And this is really special. Then, if you like history, if you like religion, if you like Christianity, if you like Judaism, don't go away. Stay with us. The city was surrounded with a wall. If I remember correctly, twelve hundred uh, meters of wall. And you can see part of it in front of you. Uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about the Canaanite city? Um, you can read it. <laughs> I will read it. But loud, please. And so, as you said, Canaanite Arad was surrounded by a wall, 1176 meter long and about 2.4 meters wide. wide. 
semicircular towers, gates, and posters, small openings. A rainwater storage reservoir was found in the lower part of the city. It was later turned into a well. The city covered 10 hectares and included fenced dwelling as well as remains of temples and palaces. Winding up. Winding, winding. What? Yeah. What? The alleyways connected various parts of the city. The city, which had about 2,000 inhabitants, was abandoned at the end of the early Bronze Age II. The uh, reasons for its abandonment are unclear. It is possible that climate change led to a depletion of water sources. Maybe, maybe. Well, there, actually, we don't know what, what's happened there, but what is important for us to understand that that was the city. I mean, usually it's city on top of a city on top of a city. Here, it's totally not. Then let's first go to see the well, and then we're going to climb up to see one of their houses. Uh, what about, um, let's um, check in for tonight. Then you're going to be very close to your son. You're going to bring him food. She brought him like tons of food. And she cooks a lot. She specializes in, in vegan, veggie, and regular. And food. omelets. <laughs> yeah, we just ate omelette now. And and, uh, then this is the reservoir. The idea is that this is the lowest place of the city. Then all the rain, and guess what? It actually rained a little bit when we came to here. Uh, the, all the rain goes into the lower part. To say that uh, the uh, geographical uh, spot where we are is all right. yes, in between the uh, Negev to Judea Desert. So Judea Desert go a little bit further east to where the Dead Sea. Yes, this you can see the city of Arad there. Desert, but where we are, this is, a, this is Negev, which is a higher and we are above uh, 600 meters height. Yeah, it's freezing. Level. Yeah. So compared to, to Dead Sea area in Judea Desert, which is really hot, this is much cooler and, uh, and it's a better, we can, we can yeah. have snow over here. Yeah, then it's a better place to, uh, for a settlement than instead of being uh, uh, at the Sodom and Gomorrah area. Then in that case, this is the well, and you can see the houses around that. And, from the roof, from the alleys, all the water rich here. I mean, it's it's a great system, and especially when, uh, although it's not the, the hardcore of the desert, it's still it's still uh, cold here. I mean, it's still uh, not a lot of uh, rain here. Then every drop is important. Mm -hmm. Now let's climb up a little, little bit because we didn't walk a lot at all. The good thing is that I was supposed to eat with my aunt. Uh, dinner and uh, she cancelled then I have a lot of time to be here until they will kick us out it's a special type of a house but look at that look at the clouds look at the Sun it is beautiful isn't it colors, colors are flashing bright Just paint here. It is. It is. Yeah. And those are, uh, you're actually traveling now with two tour guides. We love to talk. But think about being here for meditation. All right. Yeah. You can see part, part of the towers. They renovated one of the house, houses of uh, um, Arad, but you can see that the idea is the same idea. Remember the stone here in the middle of the house, or in the house, and let's let's enter. Wow! Look at the view. Look at the view.
isn't that the earliest house? Yes, help! <laughs> Turned to be a prototype. Prototype. A rad prototype. All right. First of all, the door is at... Where is the door? Yeah, but the door is here. But usually the door is um, at uh, uh, the smaller part. But here it's in the wider part of the house, facing to the sun, sunrise, to the east. All the, all the doors here are facing to it. I think one... When you mentioned the Israeli building, he actually thought about that. Look at that. Because there is something that connected to it. Then one house, remember the stone here, remember the column, the wooden column, and it was surrounded with a wall. And people actually did everything here. Grains, a lot of wit. This is part of the model of the Aradian house that we found. I think it's in the Israeli Museum. Now let's go in. Very narrow. In the house you can see that people actually sat around. See the bunches. It reminds me of the ancient uh, synagogues. And the stone here According to what I said, um, the column was on it. Some people actually say that it was for a kind of a religious function. We don't know what. Mm, I don't know. But now we can actually say that you've been in one of the ancient houses from, let's say, 3000 BC. Yes. Wow. Can you say, can, you, can I hear the wow? Yes. No, but then you have them. <laughs> then let's go outside. Should we go back to the car or do you want to make a, a run tour? Yeah, let's make a short run. Sure. No? All right. I, 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 I'm happy. I'm happy. Let, all right. This is, it's the same house. Remember, it's part of the house. It has a room and a courtyard. A big one. Look at the green color. Usually I'm here in, uh, um, let's say, um, July, August, when it's quite hot here. Yeah? Do you want to go? Okay. Then we are going back to the car and with the car, we're going to climb up to show you the Jewish part of uh, uh, the city. It's amazing. It is amazing. The two cars there are of tourists. One, I think it's a couple that we saw. The other one, I don't know. But this is the bronze time, uh, the Canaanite city that, I don't know why they disappeared. Climate changing, not climate changing, war, not war. They disappeared. But because of it, we can actually go back to their land without even um, trying to excavate to see what is beneath it. Because this is the only level of it. And the tell. It's few layers. The first of all, as you can see, it's in, on top of the hill. On top of the hill, I think it controls. And from there, you can see everything. And this is the reason that uh, they build the uh, tells here. There's a line of tells, kind of uh, borders of um, uh, from the Judean the Judean um, uh, kingdom. Can I say Nabatin, Edomite? Nabatians, Edomite, Edomite. Egypt, Egyptian. 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 But that, is the, that was the entrance to, to the Judean uh, kingdom. If you want... We do have also Beersheba, which is a little bit more south. Yeah, Beersheba, it's another tell. Yeah, yeah, but it's 
okay, it's still obviously entrance. Oh so uh, no, it's it's kind of yeah. border. You know what the border? Then, in about three seconds, we're gonna be already on top of the hill. Bye bye. <laughs>